Hi again. In this video we will learn the different types of chillers that are used in the market. There are essentially two major categories of commercial chilling technologies, compression and absorption. Let's start with the compression chillers. There are three types of compressors used in compression chillers, centrifugal, rotary and reciprocating. Centrifugal compressors. The majority of centrifugal chillers are water-cooled, and it is often used for medium to large cooling loads from 200 to 6,000 tons of refrigeration. You will rarely find a centrifugal compressor in air-cooled chillers. Centrifugal compressors are usually driven with electric motors, but it is also possible to drive chillers directly with reciprocating engines, combustion, or steam turbines. What about the working principle of centrifugal compressors? Like centrifugal pumps, an impeller provides the force to compress the refrigerant vapor. The low-pressure refrigerant vapor enters the eye of the impeller. The rotating impeller adds kinetic energy to the flow which is then converted to an increase in pressure by slowing the flow through a diffuser. Reciprocating Compressors Reciprocating compressors operate similar to a car engine, it uses a piston driven from a crankshaft. The refrigerant is drawn into the cylinder during the downstroke and compressed in the upstroke. These compressors could be found on air-cooled and water-cooled chillers up to 200 tons of refrigeration. The third type is the rotary compressors, which could use one of the following. Scrolls Rotating vanes Or helical screw the helical screw is the more common type, they are used on both air and water cooled chillers. These chillers are typically available in 70 to 400 tons of refrigeration. Screw compressors work by using two interlocking rotating helical rotors to compress the refrigerant. As a conclusion, the only difference between centrifugal, reciprocating and screw chillers is the compression technology adopted by the compressor, and all the rest are the same. To know more about how vapor compression chillers work, please visit the link in the description below, because I already explained that in a previous video. Absorption chillers. Absorption cycle uses heat to generate cooling using two media. A refrigerant and an absorbent. Water lithium bromide is the most common refrigerant absorbent media pair, but other pairs can be used. The absorption process uses an absorber, generator, pump and recuperative heat exchanger to replace the compressor in the vapor compression cycle. Note that the absorption chiller must operate at very low pressures, about 1 over 100th of normal atmospheric pressure, for the water to vaporize at a cold enough temperature, example at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, to produce 44 degrees Fahrenheit chilled water. The absorption cycle, illustrated here, can be summarized as follows. In the generator, gas, steam or hot water is used to boil a solution of refrigerant absorbent, water lithium bromide. Refrigerant vapor is released and the absorbent solution is concentrated. Next step in the condenser. The refrigerant vapor released in the generator is drawn into the condenser. Cooling water cools and condenses the refrigerant. Heat will be rejected from condenser to the cooling tower stream. Evaporator. Liquid refrigerant is dropped in pressure when it flows through an orifice into the evaporator. Due to the lower pressure in the evaporator, flashing takes place. The flashing cools the remaining liquid refrigerant down to the saturation temperature of the refrigerant at the pressure present within the evaporator. Heat is transferred from the chilled water to the refrigerant, thereby cooling the chilled water and vaporizing the refrigerant. Absorber Refrigerant vapor from the evaporator is drawn to the absorber section by the low pressure resulting from absorption of the refrigerant into the absorbent. Cooling water removes the heat released when the refrigerant vapor returns to the liquid state in the absorption process. The diluted solution is circulated back to the generator. Heat exchanger The heat exchanger transfers heat from the relatively warm concentrated solution being returned from the generator to the absorber and the dilute solution being transferred back to the generator. Transferring heat between the solutions reduces the amount of heat that has to be added in the generator and reduces the amount of heat that has to be rejected from the absorber. Hope you liked this video, please subscribe for more future videos.